I just thought the female form was the most amazing thing. I was collecting porn magazines in the early 80s. They looked totally different back then, by the way. It was like backlit. It was hairy vaginas. It was hairy butts. I was cutting out the ladies, putting them in a shoe box, just looking at them. They were so beautiful. And then we all know porn changed in the end of the 80s, in the 90s, yeah. sort of shaved vaginas. And then 2000, it was just like, you know. Uh, I don't really watch porn anymore, so I don't know what happened to it. But um, things. I remember how you bought the book, and you kind of came through, and I think Jens and Olaf was talking, and you kind of just went, and I was like, you went, I think I just bought a swingers book, <laughs> a book about swingers. <laughs> so funny. I, I love it, though. It's like, I don't, I remember quite a lot of things, and I, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it's interesting, that. Yeah, because I was thinking that was a book about like just relationship in general, but it's like oh, it was it was about having an open relationship and all that stuff, and uh, yeah, so so I never read it because it's it's what well, you know people can do whatever they want, but for me and Jens, it's never been a, a question. We always just you know, I think we're just too Danish. We just stick together. <laughs> we don't. Want I love to- that though, because you yeah. know, like with Swedes and Danes, let's just talk about it. Like Danish people and Swedish people, it's like they're so liberated. Like Swedish women are just naked all the time. They're like, woo, <laughs> totally liberated, have sex from the age of 15. And then when I arrived in UK, I was like, oh my God, these pals are really filthy. <laughs> really? Like everything... <laughs> yeah, totally. Because everything is really loaded. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's quite, um, like you said, like, you know, Danish people are supposed to be really liberated and have loads of sex, but it's like, but within that, it's like you don't, well, well, I don't know what loads of sex is anyway, but it's not like, I think for me, for me, the liberation, and of course, energy is energy, and so energy is tied into sexual energy, of course, because otherwise we wouldn't be here, you know? Yeah. But it's like the liberation possibly doesn't come in nursing uniforms and like school uniforms. <laughs> you no, know, it's like, it's something else, you know? I don't have the kinks <laughs> that a lot of people here in UK have so funny it is Um, it is it is oh i didn't know they were so different actually and oh really well well i have to say when we traveled in we we went to the uk in the van and we were parking somewhere and it was quite quite suspicious the way like the whole situation cars came Another car came. They all went into the bushes. Oh, it was a dogging area. Exactly. And they were always <laughs> looking over to me. And Jensen was like, ah. <laughs> and then we started, I don't know who, was it probably Oli? I don't know who, who actually told us in a really calm sense, like that is pretty normal. And then I met a, yeah. a woman from the UK uh, last year. And she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a, we had like a forest nearby us when we were children. We weren't allowed to go there because there were just people having, Yeah sex in the woods uh yeah so both gays and straight and you know all the kind but i that's that's i don't think that's a thing here in denmark i have to google that but but i we, me and everyone was just like don't you dare come over here <laughs> and the worst thing is it's like i almost understand it if it's like a pure like fetish you know like fetish kind of um how should i put this like underground underbelly subculture of of sexuality right but it's quite like a like just married couples quite like normal you know like svensson you know what i mean i know it's like and i'm not what is it with these people it's like it's just because my god there was nothing sexy about them for sure not so listen before we kick off or whatever be like how are you like how 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 what's happening how how's things Things are good. Like we are, it's, I'm just trying still to settle into normal life. You know, now we have like a farm and we have 12 chickens and two pigs and dog. And it's quite different from, from van life. And, and for me, I always been like a free bird. So it's just kind of, you know, getting used to, to, to this adventure. This is going to be an adventure. And we are now looking for, investors to invest in the place so we can start building so we can start building the mystery place yeah or we have to find some funds or whatever so we are figuring out that stuff right now but otherwise yeah yeah good good you know slowly yeah Yeah, just uh 
getting out of the Danish winter? <laughs> oh my God, I know. I, I spoke to this week. You know, I'm actually going to try to get a flat in Stockholm, which would be difficult. But I'm going to not move home, but I'm actually going to have, we're going to have two flats because Olaf and I are still together. But I yeah. like to, I just feel like <sighs> with work and my photography and again with sexuality in UK, it's like, uh, I'm not going to say that they don't get it here, but it's just something totally different happening in Scandinavia in the sense of it's not just um, empowering or or body positivity is beyond that, you know. And I feel like with UK, because when I go back to Stockholm, it's like bam, 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 I'm super busy. And I, I come back here and people start to talk about, I st speak to musicians about fees, you know, and they're like, oh, I was thinking £150. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> seriously. So I'm going to try to get a flat in um, Stockholm. No, oh, I'm wow. not going to try to. I will. It's going to be quite difficult, but it will work out in some kind of way. Uh, but a friend of mine just mentioned the weather, the weather and the winter, and she was like, "Yeah, I just feel a bit now. I'm quite done with the darkness." And I was like, "Hmm, I think I forgot how dark it gets up there." <laughs> and especially Stockholm, it must get even worse. I know, like for here, I'm it's like thinking that. it's. I think we have like it's, the minimum is six hours of daylight here, where it goes. You know, okay, that's yeah. okay. How about Stockholm? I think, uh, I, you know, my, I, I'm quite, uh, uh, I'm not romantic, but I'm quite um, via modig and sentimental about things. Uh, totally via mood, yeah, it's so bad. Uh, melancholy is called in English, but via mood is such a better word, isn't it? Just, it yeah. is, it is, yeah. Um, and um, I think they have, let's see, it gets light around 11, 10, 11, dark again by two. So maybe five hours max four and a half but oh. I kind of had these romantic feelings around that. I used to think I remember going to school and it was dark and when I left school it was dark and I just remember walking through the snow you know, <laughs> in, in the hoods <laughs> exactly exactly but I think that it was also the thing it back then it was still snow so it was not so bad because yeah. you had the light of the snow and the moon and everything so it was okay but now it's like It's just like a rain season in Denmark. Yeah, and then you have the I'm darkness as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. But how are you then? So I... Um... <clears throat> hmm. Which part? I mean, it's just been so much though. Because <laughs> yeah. we met... We met... Um... We in... met in the middle of COVID. Yeah. And... Um... I think, you know how people were talking about going back to normal? And I'm always curious about this, going back to normal, what that means. And I felt like COVID period or, or whatever unfolded gave people, or never mind people, but gave actually in general people, but also gave me a chance to really um, not figure out because it's not a head thing but really sink into what we're all about you know mm. and um I think in some kind of way it um made me really subconsciously push for what I really wanted to do so what I really want to do is I want to share this first talking about COVID and how I am it's like I am uh, for me to be Uh, open about um, pain and trauma and twilight and dark woods, outer woods, scary dark places and inner scary dark places is for me that has been a way to not only process what first happened in 2016 when Olaf and I went through to IVFs and at that point we already tried to create life you know for three years yeah so and um, For me, my personal and private is also my professional. And it's super funny because, you know, as artists, people are like, women are always so private, <laughs> you know. No, 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 hang on. Women are always so personal in their art, you know. I mean, I don't know if you know about Stina Volter and her journey and her paintings. It's a Swedish artist. Okay. Uh, she she talks a lot about the body and trauma and abuse and I was really pondering on this because actually um, 
uh, Picasso was really personal in his art. He was really chauvinistic, you know. It's like you have all these artists, it's like super personal. Yeah. But subconsciously, unconsciously, so whatever you put out there anyway will be personal. For me, the personal and the professional goes together as long as I can hold that for myself. So yeah. I'm not leaking. So how am I? I felt like during uh, 2020 up to 2022, because really it's 2023, <laughs> get over it, right? <laughs> Is I thought those two years were uh, incredibly challenging two years, but also very uh, supportive in the sense of really dipping into ourselves. Yeah. To hold... Um, not to hold back, but how do we maintain our days? How do we maintain our hours? How do we maintain our time? Because that would be an instant indication of where you're at in your emotional world, you know? So you know how I want is like, I would do this, this, this if I had more time. I would do this, this, this. Yeah. If I if I wasn't working so much, I would do I, I always dreamt about doing that, right? And then during COVID, everything just locked down. Uh, even in Sweden but I mean I was in Scotland so it was like everything just went Phew. and what I love with that um, I have loads of different parts to react on that but one of the parts was really like you know when everyone was journeying for more time and when they got the more time what were they doing watching Netflix drinking and eating crisps you know <laughs> and I'm not making any judgment I'm just like I did that too we went through all the Peaky Blinders me and Olaf it was amazing yeah but it's like really our dreams and our wishes. Here's my thing. Mm. Our dreams and our wishes, when we have more time, why are we not doing that with, with kindness? You know, why are we not doing that that we think we're dreaming about? And then when we got presented all this time, loads of people here in the UK in a way find themselves just drinking every day to cope. And I think it's a beautiful um it, 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 it's something beautiful with that to see here is the time what are you doing with it fuck actually I'm not doing A, B, C and I think that kind of awareness if we <sighs> dare watching ourselves and our behaviour in these kind of times mm. uh, it could give us loads of indications of where we're actually at so going back to how I am I felt like during COVID, um, something was turned up a bit. And I was like, I'm actually really going to uh, say yes to things I want to do. I'm really going to literally head into the woods, uh, photograph as many women and men as I can, hold retreats, do all these things that I was journeyed to do. Because if I don't do it now, then it's mm. never going to happen. And I absolutely did it with them. Um, I'm always, I'm quite a nervous person, you know. It's like I, I was scared as fuck. I was nervous. I uh, really, yeah. I wasn't really apprehensive, but yeah, I get really nervous. Yeah, like super nervous. Like, oh my god, <laughs> even talking about, it, I can feel it. I'm so yeah. happy you're sharing that because I'm always shitting myself when I have to do these stuff, like like women's retreats or women's circles or even going on a podcast. I'm always so nervous. So me too. I was like, before I came on here, I was like, do I have to poo again before I go on? But I have pooed already. I'm nervous all the time, yeah? And it's not that one where it's like, see the fear and do it anyway. It's like, literally, I, I'm really nervous. And what I'm really nervous about is, uh, not that I'm going to come across like an idiot or a fool or stupid. I don't, I actually don't, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm nervous about losing myself because mm -hmm. I have lost myself so many times. So in the olden days, when I did like photography talks, I was standing talking and I couldn't hold my own space. So I felt like I'd taken a really bad ketamine tablet, right? <laughs> Got chucked into the outer space and I could just see myself talking and the mouth moving away. And the more, the more I thought about what I wanted to say, the more stuck I got, right? So one of the things I learned is like, you know what, like just, just you can't premeditate what you want to say. It's a few things I want to share with you, like twilight, not black and white, visceral diet, female nipple, and um, In, yeah, 
the impression uh, impression the um, oppression of nature because nature is powerful as fuck yeah it is. but i think the main thing is really and it's interesting that we're talking about that it's like we're all in this life together you know we're all in this journey if you want to call it that mm. we all have our traumas and anxieties some people have more some people have less but what we have in common everyone is like it's just the library isn't that great of different kind of emotions and nervousness i guess is connected to anxiety and anxiety is connected yeah. to fear so then you just need to not work out with your head but sit down and see what what is that fear about and my fear about this here with you is losing myself because that that's really trauma triggering but then also letting you down so you coming off this conversation with me and going like oh yeah Jan- that was really like that was such unnecessary chat <laughs> you know what I mean so mm. I'd say I think when we connect with those fears then the fear is actually not as powerful anymore true true and, but it's when we push away it's like <sighs> it comes it's- back with revenge you know it grows bigger. So, so my question: How could it? How can I support you in not leaving, you know, the body? So you stay here. How can I be supported of that? Um, I think uh, I you're supportive of that already because I work as a photographer. So I'm, even if I'm looking down here, I'm kind of always watching you in some kind of way. I'm very observant. So to keep the connection, but it's interesting that you said that because I actually think for most adults, kids are different. Yeah. It's our own responsibility to support ourselves in that. Kids is different, but I think as adults, if you find that you have a... Um, those defects or those kind of anxieties within it's important for you to be able to become aware of that to hold them and just you asking the question it's an interesting one because I think just asking questions like that mm. or sharing I'm nervous too before I do podcasts creates a space where we're not only equal because I feel that but we're here together because yeah. this podcast is not just you asking me questions that I'm answering it's a space that we're creating and I think with those spaces that's where the real magic unfolds because it's all about connection and a natural flow and the conversation that can emerge out of that who can also support other people in their paths on their paths it's immense you know yeah like a retreat center works like that you're just holding the space and to allow for things to unfold it's the most incredible thing ever yeah, true. That was so beautiful. Yeah, because my goal here today was also really just let it unfold a little bit, figuring because I, I've been following you for a long time now since we met. So that's not such a long time. It's three years. <laughs> and I think you're such an inspiring woman and you're so interesting. And I love the photos you did with the when the blackbirds are singing. And just the work you're doing right now with your content <laughs> it's hilarious oh my God. The, the tiktok that's also why i want you on here because i love the question you ask let me see here what happens when we are removed like what is yeah. what is happening if we are not allowed to show ourselves fully and how are we why are we so different from men why can't we show our nipples on tiktok right or, or whatever is, and how why are the men allowed to do it so i just that is definitely one of the conversation i want to have with you but also also more about your your photography and how where it all started with actually taking pictures of the female body itself like the true female body and and just i want to get behind the scenes of you what is going on there what is going on? Why are you making those videos? What is like? What is your message behind this? Shall we start with tit tit talk? Tit let's do talk. <laughs> let's work from let's work from here and now and two days ago to maybe when I was thirteen or even nine. 
Okay. So rather I like that than going from the 70s, 80s, we go from 2023, 2000 and fucking 23, right? Back to the 70s. So um, I'm going to, we're going to end up in the recycling rooms in the outskirts of Stockholm where I was collecting porn magazines, yeah? <laughs> to cut out the label. When I was nine, because the women were so beautiful, yeah? They were back the then. Female body, the naked female body is the most beautiful thing ever. It's like, it's immense. So we can all agree on that. So then we're going to talk about the naked female body and what the naked female body is allowed to do and not allowed to do mm. and why. So let's talk about two days ago. Um, I started a TikTok account in October because what happened in the end of October was that I entered a sawing, we call it Alla Helgona. I had a death altar here in my flat. And I, I, I did a few days of silence. And in this silence, this kind of creative we stream emerged because I had already I had already had all these visions of doing what the boys do, dancing mm -hmm. like the boys, just doing what men can do, but do it in my way. And since I'm a photographer, as you know, so I have, I do weddings, I do loads of events, I do loads of music events. I do um, promo and press for musicians in UK. I also do When the Blackbird Sings, which is my twilight photography, Naked Women and Men in the Woods. Mm. We share the twilight together, which is a short, brief moment. And in this short, brief moment, the people who walk into the twilight with me has the possibility to rest in nature nature and time is holding us i'm holding the camera and I'm, I'm holding the woman or the man and the woman and the man just let themselves drop into nature because we are nature we're not disconnected from nature we're always going to be nature it's just that we forget that sometimes so that's my two branches but the third one is being through comedy pointing out how fucking ridiculous it is that the female body is still so oppressed. And I, I can also talk about uh, trans women and, um, oh my God, I was about to say bipolar, but <laughs> it would be nice. Oh, that's not, Almost. what <laughs> what is that? Uh... <laughs> binar. I think it's binary, binary. Binary, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's, oh, it's so but... close to each other. It's so close <laughs> to each other, the words. <laughs> Bipolar. I put that aside. I'm going to talk about female bodies, gay, straight, uh, bisexual, whatever. I'm bisexual, but it's not called bisexual anymore. It's called pansexual or something else. But yeah, the sexuality, I don't give a shit. I just talk about the forms of the body that you carry. Exactly. So the forms also is uh, aging, aging bodies, hairy bodies, fat bodies. So it's not really about vaginas or penises. They got to do with vagina and penises when it comes to the nipples. So um, I started the TikTok account because what I was doing on my Instagram account was that I kept on retrieving these videos where men are just dancing as they are. <laughs> oh my god, it's amazing! It's amazing, and I'm trying to I'm trying to do without being nasty, but also it's like it's so ridiculous. It's like you know I don't know why women get so much stick for being like. Mm, with the names <laughs> because it's like when I look at these videos of these guys they tattooed and they're like grounding away and I'm, and you know what Nikki I'm going to say this I was like did I end up on like gay TikTok because that's okay then I get it you know it's like I was like is this some kind of underbelly of gay TikTok they're all like bears you know but no it's straight men so I was just like you know what look I can ground too yeah, I have tattoos and you did you know? So I'm going to do just this, but I'm going to plaster over my nipples because I know the nipples are like super. If you get them out, you're killed straight away. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. So, <laughs> what I noticed was that I was just dancing like the guys and my TikTok account now is stopped on 120 followers. And you see what you need to know if you don't know about TikTok is like these accounts, they have like... You can post yourself having breakfast and you have like 5,000 followers. Your posts will have like um, 
70,000 views. TikTok is a totally different uh, platform where the visibility is immense. But even on TikTok, I've been penalized in some kind of crazy way, right? So yeah. I don't even have any visibility. And here it comes. I don't care about me and my content. It's fine. You survive with that bad. But what I want to say is representation and diversity. I always talk about your visceral diet, what you eat with your eyes on exactly. a daily basis, unconsciously. What is the minerals and vitamins that you're lacking in your visceral diet? What is it that you don't get to eat? Who is not represented and where is the diversity? So that's number one. Mm. Uh, become aware of what you eat with your eyes because that's going to be a part of your subconscious and unconscious visceral flow. Uh, so if I'm removed, if I don't even exist, right, uh, what happens then with the younger generations exactly. of women and men and their unconscious awareness around who's allowed to exist? If I can't even yeah. dance, then if I can't even dance, if I, well, the posts are, so on Instagram now, they, they recommend that if I remove these posts, then I get more visibility. And obviously I haven't done that. So it's not so much that they're being bad towards me and I have the community guidelines towards me. It's like, actually, I'm not even allowed to exist. So I'm going to give you this as well. I sat on a tube in Stockholm and there was this young girl next to me scrolling on Instagram. And I'm like, it would be like, Who's she following, you know? <laughs> so I'm looking at her scrolling away on the tube in Stockholm. And I'm like looking and it's all young girls like her. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Because sometimes, you know, we follow something who's not even us. You know what I mean? It's like something totally different. Yeah. Um, but I'm looking at this kind of feed that she's scrolling. And I'm looking at her and I'm looking at the girls she's following. And they're all young girls just like herself, like that she relates to. But not a single one got the same skin color as her. So I was like, so she's following all these young girls because she's interested. We follow what we're keen, but like, why do we follow someone? Because we want yeah. to see more. But she doesn't subconsciously want to see more of her because her skin tone doesn't even exist. Mm. Ooh, that's deep. So. If you don't even see someone who looks like you, yeah, then if you don't follow someone who looks like you, who reminds you of you, then where are you in this world who's all visceral nowadays, which yeah. is all consists of images? That's such a good question because I was also that is something I, I wrote down here. What does it do to to young women and and girls? Um, seeing all this and not being allowed to see all all the body shapes and who who are who are deciding who are deciding what we can see and what we can't see and what is wrong and what is right i think it's such a good question i think that it's like because even with you like it's such a fun video you are posting up there and you know you you're taking the piss of the guy and and but still you you're not just because you so so because they say you're sexual offensive or what is it actually behind those videos yeah that one is um the ones when i'm dancing it's quite a few i, I like that guy they are um i mean you love this i can't it's so complicated this but so i can't i'm just i got my nipples covered but i just look like him because i even made the tattoos yeah you, know? you did yeah <laughs> and that's a sexual um uh, it's a, a yeah it's sexual action like activities so I'm doing sexual activities but you see with my nipples too we need to talk about my nipples so I have female nipples because I have a vagina okay yeah but my nipples so what how do we identify a female nipple then a nipple who can breastfeed I guess and soothe and nurture a, 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 a nipple who can sustain life, I guess, who can breastfeed the baby. But I never breastfed. Like, I never breastfed. Well, I didn't do much of that either. But I never had a baby who was sucking on my nipple. So then they're yeah. not female in that sense. And now I'm 48 and I'm probably not going to have a baby ever who suck on my nipple. So I never breast, I never fed a baby or nurtured a baby. 
And then the other part of it is like my nipples are, if I if I lay grow, I have a couple of wee naughty wee hairs coming out. And even for me, I'm like, oh my God, I look like a fucking troll, yeah? <laughs> and sometimes I leave it because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm natural. But then sometimes I'm like, oh no, this is like full on. That's too know? much, yeah. I think Actually, yeah. They're out. So now I have hair nipples who never had a baby. So then is that no male nipples then? How do we identify the female nipple? Do you yeah. have to have a big tit? Does that have to be a boob there? Some people don't have much boobs. Is that still a female nipple? Trans women, here it comes. So they do they have female nipples or male nipples? Fucking, I don't know. And this is the conversation I think is interesting because... What Not about- again, because it's like, it's the visibility. Because, you know, my videos, it's like I'm thinking about people seeing videos. My videos that I make of me dancing, it, they don't they don't hardly reach anyone. Uh, they don't reach anyone because they they clamp down by social media. And TikTok now um, finally killed me. Um, no. Because I made a video. I, yeah, I, I'm laying in bed on TikTok and I made a video of me blowing up and literally I'm like, oh, I'm just staying here in bed and blowing up. And then the next thing is like, <clears throat> like there's me pumping, yeah? And that has been removed. So I can't even fart on TikTok, yeah? And I'm wondering, here it comes, I'm laughing because I think it's funny. But the other part of it is like, with the anxiety behind it, it's like, so f- women, female artists can't create content as they wish. Mm. But porn is everywhere. Yeah, porn is everywhere. Um, and it's also a lot of other content that social media think that they can't control, like bullying. Yeah. But if they can control me on a daily basis, surely they can clamp down on bullying, cyberbullying and, you know, hate speech. It's really curious. Or like, you know, with during COVID, did you say if you said anything that wasn't according to... Oh, my God, yeah. Are you kidding? I was even talking about vaxxing my armpits, yeah? I... And it came up on Instagram with COVID, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, guys, I was talking about vaxxing. I'm sorry about my accent. I was like, can I not even mention vaxxing, vaxxing my armpits before COVID comes like in the story, I wasn't even writing anything. And in the story was like, COVID, this is the na na the na na vaccines. And I was just like, this is insane. I'm talking about vaccine here, here. And I think that's shocking. It was. I remember that. I remember that. I, that I clearly remember. That was such a good video. And then you got banned because of that as well, because you were saying, saying one word that was not allowed at this point. And this brings me back to what who who decides what to see and what not to see right what is what is wrong and right what when what about and i was when you were saying this i was thinking what about man boobs you know fat men who get boobs <laughs> yeah can they not be on there and and when did this all started that we are not allowed to see um the the female nipple because i can't stop thinking about bali when we are talking about that i don't know if you've been ever to bali but in bali they only they used to only wear sarongs that's it like female and male and and the women always were bare breasted until i think i think it was the, the dutch came or something like that in the 1800s they couldn't control it started raping the women and they started covering themselves up but if you go into the mountains in bali you will still still see uh, the older women just you know tits out and yeah. it's so beautiful and it's not and it's not sexual it's just a part of the body and i think what wh- when did it like go sideways here where it's like a single little nipple like you said you can be flat breasted you can have not being you know having a baby or big boob small boob so so i think it's um yeah i'm always saying to jens i think we should all be not allowed to bear a wear um bathing suit at the beach so we are so we're not sexualizing so much so we always see naked people like in germany they are naked all the time everywhere they can be naked the germans are naked i think that's the secret behind the germans (laughs) i was just about to say that because i think if we're going to talk about that with my work when the blackbird sings and the woods and nakedness and tiktok and 
nipples. I think, and you just said it though, it's like the colonization, the colonialization mm. of the body. And colonialization <laughs> demands, it's it's about power, taking over power. So the yeah. more you colonize the body and, and, and oppress the body and, and, and hide the body, the more power you obtain. And then the best way of obtaining this power is to get people themselves to think that they have to cover up, yeah? yeah. Because that's how you actually colonize the mind of these people, most women, for example. I mean, to be honest, in Sweden now, I've been talking about Sweden like here in the UK, like, oh, yeah, Sweden, they're all naked and they're really relaxed about being naked and yada, yada. And I went to Stockholm during the summer and Nikki, I had this thing. I was like, I'm just going to have my tits out. Every, not in the pool, of course. I don't like the tits out in the pool. But every time I sit by like um, the pine trees, you know, Tallana in the yeah. sun. I'm, if I swim in the lake, if I swim in Malaren, if I swim, swim in Skärgården, the archipelago, I'm just going to be boobs out. Dude. I was the only one and some kind of old granny, you know, born in the 50s. Do you know what I mean? I was like, what the hell is going on? Kids even have tops on. Yeah? I know. And I, was, and I was like, I went out with my uh, brother's daughter and she's 10. And I said to her, and this is really important because I don't want to be that old lady who shamed the wee kids, you know. I said to Tila, I was like, just so you know, I'm going to have my boobs out when I swim because that's what I'm doing this summer and I didn't want to shame her because she's very because uh, she has a top you know and I said you can do whatever you want to do I can do whatever I want to do and that's the main thing and she was kind of like uh -huh. and then when we got down to the beach it was a guy with bigger boobs than me and I was like look at him Tila and she was like what and I was like do you not think he got bigger breasts than me? And she kind of looked and looked at me. She's like, yeah, definitely. And I was like, why is he not wearing a top then? Yeah. And this is the thing. It's like to really remove all the shame and <gasps> the apprehension and, and and the trauma who sits in every single woman's chest. I mean, who hasn't had the boobs squashed, you know, in that way that we don't want to? Yeah. And for me, it's like it's really important to talk about this because it got to that point that we just, normally cover up now and I'm so against that because actually it's about covering up age it's about covering up uh, weight you know it's about covering up everything you got to do with life itself and when we cover up life itself we are removing the power that our bodies actually hold which is these amazing structures who's creating this possibility for us to go through a kind of short life of exploring, smelling, seeing, mm. hearing. The more we cover up all these sensations, the less we're alive. And why, here it comes, why the body has been colonialized is because we need to control the body because if we don't control the body, if we, especially women, sit back and go like you know what look at that boob you know yeah look I'm good enough as I am I'm a little bit fat here I'm a little bit wrinkly here I don't need to buy that cream I don't need to buy those trousers to push in my stomach I don't need this if I just feel comfortable if I'm not happy forget about happy if I'm just comfortable as I am what will happen with the whole capitalistic system Oh, I, I got goosebumps when you just said that. My whole body just reacted like. Pfft. Imagine if you were just like, I'm okay as I am. Yeah. I don't care about being enlightened and happy. Imagine if you were just like, you know what? I'm all right as I am. I'm just alive. I'm taking away. I'm bleeding. I'm not bleeding. I'm all right. What would happen with the world? Oh. For men too, by the way. For men too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. I think we would just be much more relaxed and not running so fast. I don't have the answer to this, but I can just when you say the words, what my body is just my nervous system is just like, oh hell, give that shit to me. That would be awesome because 
no more comparison, no more, you know, look at her, she's prettier than me, or look at her, or whatever, you know, more, no more, like, the bullying will fall away in many places, because it's a lot of it, it's all attached to the body, what we are bullying each other with when we are, when we are younger, right, or also as adults, I don't know, what do you think, what would happen? What what came up when you were talking was that I think it's it's not just you and me here. It's like generations of women before us who mm. wasn't worthy, who wasn't enough, who wasn't lovable, who talked about the bodies in a really, um, I was about to say negative way, but like in a really shitty way. I don't want to use the words positive and negative because that gets really fueled to, it's okay, we don't need to shame the shame that we hold. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's layers that need to be healed of um hatred towards the female body i have it too do you know what i mean i actually to be honest through my i always loved the female body like i always loved looking at it like most men like a free holiday across the butt the boobs the cleavage you know it's like we all like love to gaze and, and just, like I said, a free holiday across the female body. And I think that's also important to, that's that's a learned behavior for me. It's like, who, who am I to be like, mm, you know, <laughs> down the back, over the chest. It, 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 and I, it's not right and wrong. It's just how do we treat bodies, you know? When do we objectify and make it sexualized and when do we not? Because also... My images, my when the blackbird sings images, someone was like, "Oh, it's really nice because they, um, they're not sexualizing." And then I was thinking, maybe they are sexualizing, but in a way that we don't even know about. You know, mm. the sheer, the sheer power behind living, pulsating, bleeding, not bleeding bodies. You know, the sheer weight behind this, this amazing thing called human laying on the ground pushing down the moss you know the, the leaves some mud you know it's it's maybe that is the sexualized that we don't even know about i mean we just learned most things we think is sexy through porn in that yeah. kind of way and what i think would happen if i was good enough I don't know what would happen. I just know when I grew up, I uh, I got my menstruation when I was 13. I didn't have any problems. I wasn't shamed or anything. I thought it was quite cool. But then I remember not having any tits until the age of like 15, maybe. And I was called plank at school, right? And uh, I remember being like, uh, feeling like, uh, when people called me plank, um. I was totally aware of it, but it was mostly guys. And I was only like 12, 13, 14. I remember the, I guess it was anxiety behind that. Yeah. And when what I feel with just being enough, and I'm sure that's also fueled by um, uh, by trauma and maybe growing up in a family where maybe confidence wasn't on the top of the list, you know. I'm sure loads of other kids would respond in a different way. But you see, trauma for me is not just a family. Mm. It, 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 it's like those Russian dolls. It starts on a tiny wee level between you, your mom and your dad, and then the siblings, and then the family, and then the society, the city you live in, and then the country, and then the world. So it's no, it's no one's fault. It's levels of it. And what I think will be different, actually, Nikki, what I'm trying to say is that I think if we didn't have all that, that never being enough, never being lovable, never being, or we're lovable, but we're not enough though. You know, we could always be better. It's always a chase. It's always one wrinkle that you don't like. It's it's always something towards aging and growing up that you try to pull back. And I think it's a waste of energy. I think it's, um, if we could sit back, we would move forward in a way that we can't even imagine in actually, uh, not being so bogged down by anxieties and shit yeah. that really doesn't matter in life. I think we miss a lot with the bigger picture of life because we're so in this, oh, the, 
the makeup didn't work out there or fucking I don't know voice or you know guys and the muscles I'm like actually I don't even know what that is you know it's like building 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 sure it's good to be fit but it's like for what yeah. we're going to die anyway you know yeah what is what is the what where's the fine line between fit and and showing off almost like it's um yeah it becomes a, a little bit hollow I also feel like if 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 it's if you're just in the gym all the time trying to to be there to impress somebody I understand if you're there to do to get healthy and everything but it's like like you just said it's like missing the point of being here and we are here in such a short time and we are actually using a lot of that time worrying about our looks oh, yeah totally shit and I think the main thing is to become aware of it because even because again I don't want to shame it it's like when we have these worries you know and they look different but they kind of similar it's all about it's funny how you said gym because what I was thinking was you want to show off but then just when you said those words I was thinking because you don't really you want to show off you want the better you want people to see you because actually you're really struggling with seeing yourself it's something like that or covering up for something that you don't want to see yeah And that brings me a little bit back to what you said about the whole COVID situation and, you know, the time we had. And you said something about a lot of people started drinking instead of using actually the time. I think uh, using time for what they, you know, what they want in life. And I think I think the time was also there where, where people were actually discover, discovering themselves. You know, they were alone with themselves. They were alone with their partners. And, and, you know, the world stopped for a moment. And I think, I think actually a lot of people uh, were figuring out, oh, shit, I'm, I'm, oh, shit, you know, this, I think that was the first time in a long time they felt themselves and, and, and I think a lot of people panicked in that situation as well. Um, yeah, and then started drinking instead or whatever, instead of actually looking at themselves and, It's a little bit sad also, this story, a little bit, I think, because it's, wh where are we? Where did we end up here? How did we end up here? Because I don't feel like, again, I'm going back to the Balinese, because I don't feel like they they have the same sense on the on the, 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 the body and, and everything like we have. Like, they don't have, like, this the same obsession. They will, though, because now they have Instagram and TikTok and all that stuff. But because when I started coming there so many years ago, it was, you know, the internet was still wonky and they were just living their life on the little island there. So it's hmm, it's interesting. How did we end up here? Well, I know even when Instagram, no Instagram, I didn't have it. I know when Facebook, you know, I had my work, my photography on Facebook for years. Yeah. And it was around, uh, it was around 2016 so my grand died in the start of 2016 when we were supposed to start the IVX in Stockholm. And that summer, I remember it, Facebook giving me a 30 days span. Something was turned up in 2016. It must have started in 2015. And I know Trump came in. Trump came in in 15, maybe the end of 15, 16. Mm. If I, I don't, don't remember right. Yeah. Something shifted anyway, because I had loads of images removed and, I think it's um it seems like so it's about control and it's about keeping power structures in place and it's about companies making a lot of money. Yeah. And then it's about on the individual level, um because also of course you have to understand that during COVID I wasn't like um well I did go for walks every day to be honest, but I wasn't like I'm doing yoga every day, you know. I wasn't doing all the things that maybe I wanted to do either. No. But I think how we ended up here is like, well, I think what happens now, the next step is that we really, we all, people don't have to open TikTok accounts and have the tits out like me, but we really have to talk about this because it's getting to a point where um, anything who got to do with the natural body is getting deleted. Um, and it's something with something with time 
and aging and and nature and being totally connected to nature which seems really threatening to the power structures in place so for example social media and um, on lots of different levels i mean i need to share this too like when the blackbird sings has a list of images oh you love this by the way <clears throat> so i got a list of images on when the blackbird sings my instagram account of images to be removed right check these images you're going your head is going to explode and they were like you have to remove these images and then we will recommend your account and your account will turn up on explore explore and I thought, okay, so they don't even recommend my account. It doesn't turn up on Explore. So I'm going to remove these images. I removed an image of me and two friends dancing around the fire during to uh, in the full moon. Mm -hmm. and no, And all these images, there's no vaginas or tits showing. It's just bodies. So I removed the image of three women dancing around the fire naked. I removed the image of a... Uh, a daughter and her mom, but you can't see anything because the mom is laying down in moss and the daughter is just curled over. Women around the fire, daughter and a mom. I removed women in a circle, naked bodies sitting together. Oh. And God, let's see, I can't remember that. I um, need to go back to my Instagram. And then there was something else really symbolic. So I removed these images because I was like, you know what, I just want to have some more visibility because I want to be able, here it comes, I want to be able to reach people with my images who hasn't seen my images. I want to be able to tell people who hasn't heard about the twilight that everything exists. It's not positive or negative. You're not healthy or unhealthy. Everything, all of you exist. So I removed these images and they gave me another list of images to remove. No. And that is the pictures of, uh, so then one of the images who came up on this list, one of the images is Olaf. He's a 50 year old man with white hair. He's laying in the on autumnal leaves. It's the end of September. We're in the archipelago in Sweden. What you see around him is fern, um, the yellow fern, the red leaves. Well, you see, of Olaf, it's just his grey hair, his back, and the side of his body. They want me to remove that image. Another image, and I'm going to write about that, who comes up, and they, they bring up all the time, is an ageing couple. Uh, they're only in their 60s, but both of them got white hair. It's a man and a woman. The only thing you see is the naked backs and the arms holding each other, and, and Heather and the stone behind and that image seems to be really offensive. You don't even see the asses, yeah? And why hmm. I think it's offensive is uh, they don't look like supermodels. They're clearly aging. They're close. And they just as they are in yeah. nature, breathing, resting in stillness. And coming back to where we were earlier on, yeah, it just come. I just come back to our, us humans in our natural state, breathing, pulsating, thinking, feeling, as we are. We're the most like if we can tap into this, how we are part of all this. The leaves changing colors. That's also us. The rain, the wind, the waters, the moons that we have inside us until it's just a dark sky with no more moon. It's like if we tap into that energy, it, again, here comes the whole world would change. It's like it would just be, and when I say the whole world would change, I firstly mean our inner world. We would just, um, I don't know what we would focus our energy on, but it would just, it would just do that change, you know? And I think during COVID, coming back to that, um, I think a lot of people did dip into something deeper. Mm. If that was more anxiety, then that's okay too. We're not here to be happy. It's like it, it's just an awareness about how how deep is that black lake of trauma, pain, and also possible creativity. Yeah, because I think it's all in together, and possibly something like that unfolded for most of us. I hope. Yeah, and then we do live in a world this Monday to Friday, 
where um, following your moon cycle is difficult since the outer world doesn't do that. You know, we live in, uh, you're here and you're supposed to get better and then you're at best when you die. But really, everything is like this. We just do turns. And the, the, the older I get, you know, like in one way, going back to the 70s and 80s where we started. So I loved I don't even know why. I just thought the female form was the most amazing thing. I was collecting porn magazines in the early 80s. They looked totally different back then, by the way. It was like backlit. It was hairy vaginas. It was hairy butts. I was cutting out the ladies, putting them in a shoe box, just looking at them. They were so beautiful. And then we all know porn changed in the end of the 80s, in the 90s, yeah. sort of shaved vaginas. And then 2000, it was just like, you know. Uh, I don't really watch porn anymore, so I don't know what happened to it. But um, that's where I started. And then all through that with my photography, I remember standing in the dark room when I was 13 and I was really obnoxious when I was 13 and a troublemaker. But I remember uh, developing images and I had this piece inside me. And then blah, 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 life carried on. And then I ended up here in Scotland where I, I studied anthropology and criminology uh, at, in Stockholm and I was thinking about becoming a police officer and then I didn't I went to Edinburgh instead, and I took loads of drugs <laughs> <laughs> and I parted non-stop <laughs> for a couple of years and then I studied photography so I came back to what I've always been into which is forms images I like looking at things and when I did my photography in 2002 2003 I was photographing my friends naked. And it was a bit Nan Golden, Corin Day inspired. Uh, I just knew what I liked doing. But actually, you know, one day I stopped it because I became aware of that I was just doing what the boys are doing, mm. watching the female body in that way because it is gorgeous. It is. So I left nude photography for years to reassess where my not so female gaze were at and then when the blackbird sings started in 2016 i had my first menstruation of my second IV on the 16th of october 2016 i went down to the water wreath here in edinburgh for the new moon to do we ceremony with a friend of mine because i was just really utterly fucking fed up with all these fertility attempts i mean it's mental it's like you you go through your whole life and you're trying to not get pregnant. And then when you want to get pregnant, it's impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was feeling all this grief and loss. And I had these fertility dolls from South Africa that I had under the bed for like a year. Clearly, they didn't work. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going to burn these fucking dolls. I was burning them, but they didn't really burn up properly. So when they were floating down the water leaf, the heads were half burnt. And I was just like, oh, my God, I can never get pregnant now. <laughs> but my friend said, Bring your camera, take pictures of me naked. And the new moon, it was a super new moon in Scorpio, happened exactly at twilight. So all this unfolded really organically. Yeah. So I brought a camera and I was like, oh, I haven't photographed anyone naked for years. I brought the camera. The super new moon was during twilight. We took the pictures. And when I saw these pictures, I was like, wow. Firstly, I was like, something happened here. I could feel it. I mm. only, I didn't know comfort and uh, soothing from my pain I was also inspired in a different way so I went home to Olaf and I said I'm going to do what we've done for four years almost three and a half years at every full and new moon I'm going to go into the twilight with a, a and I photographed nature as well not just women with a with a human or photographing nature and I'm going to do this for a year to exhibit so that's really how it happened oh. and then after the exhibition it became a thing so people booked me for twilight sessions but what happened during the year was that I watched looked at so many females in the natural habitat in nature without all these cultural references of fashion if we're married or not you know just as we were and why the only thing I see when I do these sessions is forms and shapes in the twilight and I see the twilight the blue hue shining and reflecting off the body I see 
genuinely, not just like body positivity, I see genuinely how we're all totally beautiful. And when I say beautiful, it's like totally powerful, like fat backs, folds coming down, looking like drapes at a theatre, skinny backs where you see the ribs. It's all totally mm. powerful and gorgeous. And through doing this work, coming back to me and my naked women, I also healed my own inner eyes around the female body. So I actually know, like, <clears throat> a few months ago, I was sitting doing some yoga pose, and I looked down at my butt. And you know when your bum squeezes out on one side, yeah? <laughs> and I oh, looked yeah. down, and I'm, I'm, I'm really skinny, you know, but I looked at the butt, and I was like, it was really dimply with... Uh, what is it called? Cellulite. Cell 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 yeah. Cellulite. Yeah. Cell cell yeah. I think so, yeah. And here was my first, and I'm like, oh, thanks, fuck. Here was my first thought, and I love this. It wasn't like, oh, well, all bumps are beautiful bumps. It was like this, wow. I was like grappling for my phone. I was like, it looks like the moon. Oh, my God. It was totally white with these big dimps in there, like the moon, like the full moon. And the first thing that came up was like, fuck, look, it's, oh, wow, it looks like the moon. I have a moon ass, yeah? And you know I feel fucking liberated because in the sense of like, if I made a judgment, that would have been okay too. But I just became old that my inner gaze turned into an 11, 12-year-old, uh, a non-broken gaze that just see female bodies in like, wow, look at this. Oh, my God, look, she's here down to her thighs. I love that because otherwise it becomes the old bodies are beautiful. You know, it becomes a fake thing. So, like, seeing bodies, instead of making judgments, try to find that place of a awe. It's called awe, you know. Yeah. And förundran. Förundran is such a good Swedish, yeah. Swedish word. When it comes from a place where it's like, oh, wow, you know, because it is wow really fat bodies oh my god wow really skinny i mean you don't want to be super unhealthy and dying but it's kind of incredible and to come back to that place for me is it, it, it's it's 2023 it's not about good or bad or adjusting or or pro this or anti that or ally this it's about coming back to the old you know the ferundram to come back to what life is really about we only have this moment you know what I mean yeah. yeah we this is our moment hopefully I get to have more moments with you but this is our moment like oh I get like emotional when I think about it why are we wasting it you know what I mean it's like why are we wasting this moment because we have lots of trauma we can't blame ourselves yes I get that but when are we going to step up and take responsibility not only for the trauma that the whole world is suffering but our own inner pain because somewhere among this, it's like if we don't find back to that kind of 10-year-old, 11-year-old who is collecting porns, I'm not sure if that's right, though, then then <laughs> what, what are we doing? And that's what I wanted to say with ageing. I don't think I have many moons left inside me. Mm. I have plenty of moons outside that I'm going to walk in and visit and explore with other women. But like, the le the more moons that is disappearing with my eggs, the more the younger I become inside me when it comes to finding excitement and uh, how incredible things are without adding shit. We don't need to add so much stuff. That was I totally went off topic. Hmm. No, you didn't. It was so beautiful. I'm mean, you just so right. Like we just have to be here in the moment and accept, just accept where, how that our bodies are so different. Right? It was so, it was just so beautiful. I even got a little tear in my eyes here. I no, I don't know if we went up topic. Topic. I don't think so, <laughs> because that is the topic. It's like accepting ourselves. But it's do so you accept yourself, Nikki? If I do accept myself, oh my mm -hmm. God, what a question. That is, <laughs> I had, I think I struggled 
so much with my my body all through my life I even I had an eating eating disorder was when I was younger and I'm st- I I mm, I don't no to be completely honest I don't accept all of myself I'm not I, I don't like how my body looks I do I do feel like I have the same thing I have like these you know my ass also looks like the moon <laughs> But imagine when your ass looks like the moon, right? So here's my thing that came up with my ass that looks like the moon. So then I was like, am I now, here it comes, am I now supposed to buy creams for, I mean, if you get a cream for 10 pounds, it's not going to work. It needs to be like 70 quid or 50 pounds, right? How many creams am I going to buy to get rid of the moon, right? Exactly. Is the moon even going to go away? So then am I going to operate the moon to get rid of the aging on my ass, yeah? Like, look at this whole system. It's fucking mental, yeah? It's so it's mental. Like, and who's looking, at, who's looking at your moon anyway? Jens, I'm quite sure he doesn't give a shit if the moon is like the moon or if it looks like a 12-year-old. It's, I think this is super interesting. I think it's a massive conspiracy towards the female body. Oh, yeah. It's like, and I think we have internalized this so bad that actually it sips into self-hatred, right? Mm. And it becomes something else. So why is it like, so you have the moon ass, but like, do you think honestly, sorry, for, do you think you would be happy if you had this smooth butt? Yeah. Do you think so? No, I don't think so. And I would never also never go down the road of, you know, buying all the creams. I have, oh, I have been down the road when I was younger, but now I'm also, oh my God, because we we do a lot of um we do uh, what do you call it we go to the naked beaches and we go naked camping and stuff like that mm-hmm. and then you also see the other bodies and everybody has a moon butt <laughs> so i think it's just for me it's years of just hating my body and myself and and just not feeling good enough and not being you know looking like my best friend when we were younger she was just so tall and so you know so well she just looked so so beautiful and and it's just for me now in my 30s I can really feel like I'm giving you know yeah time is too short for this so I I do hmm yeah, it's all. It's also. I just wanted to say that it's beautiful because when you're talking about it, it, it you talk about. So I can't even remember. You're not even that short, though, if I remember right. I'm, I'm definitely quite, short. No, I'm short. I'm short. I'm. But I'm I, it, how tall are you? One one fifty nine. I don't. I'm shorter than you. <laughs> are you shorter than me? Yeah, I'm like one fifty six. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, I love that. But the thing is, when you were talking about it, what I think is super interesting is, I w- I wonder what the layer underneath not being as tall as your friend means. What you, what, what is the form of the layer underneath? I'm not like her. I'm not as tall. So the the, the length doesn't matter. It's something with I'm not like her. And then I wonder what your friend symbolically, of course holds that you're yearning for that you didn't have and i think that's that that's the it's super important actually to dip into that because what did your friend have that you thought your friend had that you didn't have because it's not about the length because that's just things you know Mm. and it it, that's for young it it doesn't really matter it's just something that is lacking isn't it i think the body got to do with something we're journeying for something is lacking and often I guess it's some kind of form of it being seen being seen slash being loved being held the other part of the body I think the female body is that we punish you know so I also had eating disorder of course uh, yeah well I never did anything with eating until the age of 19 so I wasn't like a kid who was like I was actually just quite comfortable in my body even if I was a plank. But then around 18, 19, 18, 19, I finished gymnasium. And then um, things happened in the family and um, I moved out and I wanted to grow up quick. So then I got myself to survive that, I guess. I felt an uh, immense lack of control and I was still really young. So then I thought I'm going to control my food 
and I went to South Africa. So I stayed in South Africa in 1994, which was mental. So even there, you know, as the, the only being 19 and like in a totally new place, the only thing I could hold on to was the food. And I think with the food, it becomes the body is it, it, it's being seen, being held, being loved. The other one is control and control is coping, isn't it? And surviving. So it's also a form of actually just coping, which yeah. negative or positive, I don't want to use those words. But actually, most things we do is just to cope. And that's kind of a positive thing after all, you know. So I think then the female body takes a lot of punishment and hatred. But then we also get fed that from all our racial diets, you know. So even if you feel okay, look, hair and nipples, not bad. Like I say, actually, I'm okay with that. But if I showed someone this, they would be like, oh, that's disgusting. So it's even if I'm okay with that. I, I don't know if you can see this one here. Maybe not. Let's see. Mm, mm. Oh, it's a so, I have a mole. Let's yeah. see, where is it? I have a mole there. Yeah. And that one got a black witch here. Me too, I it's think. Not- <laughs> have you got one too? I'm just giving this as an example, right? Yeah. And this is amazing because now it, the hair is quite long and I'm looking at this and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Like, seriously, that hair I pulled out for years because you can't have a hair. No one can have a hair in mold, right? Like, you look like a witch. It's, like, totally disgusting. And actually, when I look at it now, I'm like, I don't even know why I pulled this out. It's like a hair coming out of a mold. Yeah, but I remember how disgusting that looks. You can't have a hair in mold. Why not? Like, seriously, why not? And I think this symbolically is what I'm saying to you with eating disorders, with the journey of, is one part of it is like, it's within us. The other part is also something that is outside us. So it's that kind of consideration of, you're not, you're not as tall as your friend. I'm still quite curious about what that means if you're tall. <laughs> I do think, but it's quite, I think it's quite interesting you, you picked up on that because I think for me, I, she was always carrying a sense of confidence and she was quite, you know, you know, people looked up to her. She was quite pretty compared to me or that's how I saw it back then. So I think it was just this confidence she was actually showing. And I think when you're tall, you can even, even more embrace that but when you're small it's a different story so I think it was the confidence she had and and the way people looked at her and I was okay you know yeah I was quite small quite fat and I didn't really figure out yet to control my curls (laughs) so it was just a different story and then yeah but it shifted it it did because it was it was all an illusion she didn't she wasn't that confident and she when we got older and and I used my personality instead <laughs> to get you know to to build the confidence it's just uh it just changed and and where she is where I was lacking then she's lacking now because it was just it was just hidden behind beauty and 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 being tall if there is something about being tall actually you you come into a room in a different way to do but it's an and the worst thing is hmm? it's totally culturally connected firstly you said people were looking up on her you know yeah so that makes me think that you felt like people were looking down on you and then uh, another thing you said about your hair controlling it's funny how you even talk about controlling yourself when you're here because clearly when you have curly hair it's wild and mm-hmm. I think Very the wild. wildness in especially women the uncontrollable kind of energy is the worst enemy of the world we're living in but just so you know <laughs> with the whole hand uh, here's a culture whistle diet reference for you if a really tall woman is coming into a room in in Scotland, UK, yeah, I'm just talking about this island, then yeah. she would be hunched over. She'd be hunched over because she's very uncomfortable being taller than all the guys. And the guys often have something to say about her being tall. So UK is all about being short. 
So again, what you're talking about there, because I know I'm Swedish and it's like, you know, the tall, the beautiful, blonde Swedish women. I was like, <laughs> like we troll, you know. It's like, it, it's also culturally connected. But even when you describe your hair, you're describing when the blackbird sings, tame, wild, controlled. It's yeah. all natural. And I'm all, as you can see, for makeup, do your nails, do tattoos. I'm not saying you have to be totally natural. But what I'm saying is we had to be totally connected to our natural states. So if you vax your vagina, I don't care, or if it's bushy. But please, if you can make these decisions, not what you've been taught, but from your heart or from your soul, mm. then just anything goes. But like, even with curly hair, Dude, I always wanted curly hair. The only thing I wanted was big curly hair, right? Look at me. I'm like, eh. and my hair was so straight when I was a kid that even the hair bands fell out, yeah? The only oh. thing I wanted was curly hair. We always want something that we don't have, right? Exactly, yeah. I love my and hair, think, by <laughs> Oh, my God, your hair is so good. Thank you. But I think it's like it, talking about the things, these really personal stories, for me, it's not just a way of maybe processing it, but it's also sharing it makes it much less mm. powerful for outer energies to snap up and use in a capitalistic society. That's something true. like that. That's why I love my I I do um I do online women's circles now every month, every new moon. And actually sharing just topics about, you know, from menstrual cycle to the body, all kind of stuff we don't talk about. And it's so nice to hear other women just having, you know, the same issue, the same happiness, the same, you know, the same struggles. It's just nice to to open up these conversations. And this is also why I wanted you on the podcast today, because I don't I feel like you are really taking on these topics and bringing an out to light we need to talk about shit we need to talk about uh you you have it trying to to get get pregnant miscarriage you know all that stuff it needs to get out into world because we have we have made it such a big secret to be a woman even you know so, some of us even don't know you know our genitals we don't know how you know it looks like down there we need to talk about this shit and that's why you are here <laughs> because i'm and so thank you yeah, And also I was thinking when you were talking about the women's circles, it's like I sat in quite a few and I noticed that um, hating yourself, um, um, hate, how should I put this? So what, what I think is really important, and that's why I really got hold of what you were talking about, your body and eating disorders and stuff, because it's if we shame, if we shame that we're feeling shame about ourselves, if we shame that we hate ourselves, if we shame that we're not um, as we wish we were, then we're never going to get to these juicy diamonds mm. of fucking pure female power and that has been taken away for centuries. You know, it's like we have to allow ourselves to hate blah, 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 talk about the moon, talk about all these things to then deepen down within that. Because as long as we're brushing away on the surface, um, I knew I didn't want to do body positivity. It's really good that people do that. But like, I knew I didn't want to do like, I, I had to go into nature, you know, I had to go into twilight yeah. to get hold of this, the, the genuine power that exists in nature itself. Because if I brush over that and go like, all bodies are beautiful, all no, 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 no. Aging is nothing, unco I, like I had to go into myself and really examine my own gaze to be able to create this kind of work. And this is why I think with sharing stories, it's like, that's when when you were talking, I wanted to really get hold of when, when you were, when, when they were looking up on her. I'm also wondering if it was jealousy there, you know, like envy, you know, because, of course. you know, it's like, because these kind of conversations, they're they're fundamental piece for our not only liberation but for creativity to flow and actually genuine um, community to come together. We can we can't make up communities of light workers and witches and you know it, it we're all the same substance. And I think that's where we find the kind of the, the biggest kind of source of 
um, pure, let's call it feminine slash masculine power, you know, it's like to be really as authentic as you can be. Yeah, true. Very true. So how how do you how do you feel about yourself, your body and age? Oh and... God, that's um. I'm just going to get a bottle of wine. Um, I have <laughs> loads of different parts of me who feels loads of different things. Uh, my forty eight year old part, who 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 walked this path for forty eight years, who been in therapy who done loads of different things trying to uh, connect my emotions to the memories I have. Um, I'm just checking in. Has certain kind of ideas about myself. But how do I feel about my body? I. It's funny with my body. Here it comes. So I am. Um, I was used to. Um. And well, actually, I was about to say I didn't self harm, but actually, with the eating when I was 19 up to maybe 23, was the attacking and self harming thing. But my body itself, it's interesting, is has always been really. My body has been a little bit like this, right? You can do whatever you want. I'm just going to be around the same weight forever, right? So my body is really, I'm quite embodied in that way. My body is just like, yeah, yeah, just don't eat anything for two weeks. So I'm not going to lose that much weight or eat shitloads and I'm not going to put on that much. And even if you puke, then I'm just going to stick with me. So my body is like, it's an interesting part. It's like obviously me, but it's kind of balanced. But I think for me, my um, my journey and a certain kind of fragmentation of me, is like I'm really trying to integrate and bring all these parts together so how do I like my body is need to answer this properly or like in an honest way I know I trust my body to actually hold me rather than me holding my body and mm. um, so I I really trust my body to hold me and I trust I have periods like when I'm like pure smoking, like roll this coffee in the morning. And then I have periods when I'm like, okay, now this is a little bit too much of addiction. So I'm trying to rail that in and hold that for myself. Otherwise, I just feel like a totally addict and half of my family is, so I don't need to join that team, you know. Um, <laughs> so I try to really put trust into my body. And you see, the playfulness and what I can achieve with my body um, from an artistic point of view is like, I guess I really honor that so much that I'm really giving my body a break. I know when I was much younger, like through that period, I was like trying to control the body I feel like it's not about being happy or not. I just think it's an incredible tool. We got hands, you know? Like, I have a sore shoulder from shooting too much, but, like, we have mouths, and we're talking. It's oh, like, sure. <laughs> okay. You know? Yeah, what you say? You said shooting. I'm like, uh, oh, yeah, you're a photographer. <laughs> what the fact did you no, shoot? No, I'm a photographer. No, we're not shooting. We're photographing, you know, I've been shooting, photographing so much. And so how I feel in my body is, I feel like it would be um, almost like a dishonor to not honor it in that yeah. way. Um, yeah, it's it's a really quite big question, to be honest. I find it quite difficult to answer that. Because I don't think it's about being happy or not, but it's like I feel myself, I can feel like I have parts of my back, back on my lungs where I feel tight. That's that's how I feel my body, you know. It's... Um, I don't know, like, I actually don't give a shit anymore. I could definitely be taller, but I don't care. I could be, like, you know, when people have these wrinkles, that's just pretty. I'm getting these things coming down now. Oh, yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. Like, I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. I don't care. I like that. I just I... want to make nice work. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah, no, I see. I, I think also, I like that. I like that you are 
it seems like you are at peace with it and and you know you have some some aches and stuff like that you know with your shoulders but you seem mostly just at peace with yourself hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we're just joking <laughs> i have a question for you what should it, okay what should i have asked you i didn't know enough to ask so is there a question? Is there something on your mind you think, oh, Nikki, I really was sitting with this. Can um... That's really interesting. So <clears throat> what I like to talk about is how amazing nature is. I like I like to talk about how we all had trauma. Uh, and some people just don't know they had trauma. Some people had more, some people had less. And within the trauma, you can find the unique diamonds that makes us us, right? Uh, I like to talk about visceral diet and um, I like to talk about how uh, the female body is that powerful that it's actually being clamped down on, on social media. Um, what did you not ask me about? You didn't ask me enough about you. I wanted to talk more about you, <laughs> but that's possibly next time because I think as well, in that. I know it's a podcast and it's about my photography and visual diet and TikTok, but also for me, what I feel when we hung up is that I felt like I wanted to hear more about you yeah. because I can't talk about me without bringing you on board more, to be honest. So then, um, and I didn't step in and ask too many questions because I know you invited me to this podcast, but for me, it's 2023. He has all changed. A podcast is not about the person you're inviting. It's also about you. Exactly. And I think that is, I really, I think we are going to have a second podcast, podcast, you and me, and going a little bit deeper in, and we could maybe much more have a conversation just about, because I want to talk a little bit more about the female body, but also maybe about, you know, the whole the whole um, story about you trying to get pregnant and we could go deeper into yeah. some details there I think that will because I think we're quite on the same page we, I think we're both very different women but I think we are very much on the same page about you know coming back to nature feeling ourselves and taking it more slow and just feeling how it feels to be in this meat suit like I say in here and now and what it what yeah the question again about what it is to be a woman now and why are we still being held back in a sense yeah yeah so another question for you i love this okay. question tell me okay. something that is true for you that no almost nobody else agrees with you on it's true for me but almost nobody else agrees okay um so when you ask me that question i need to I think about things that feel true to me, but then that I also almost don't agree about because it's quite, it will be, a, so the statement will be quite a bit more extreme, right? Because otherwise it wouldn't have that kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. So if someone else doesn't agree, then it will be a statement that triggers me too. But it sing it sings true. I, the thing is, I love this because I might be walking the woods with naked women, you know, I might be doing ceremonies, but like, I'm actually not a very extreme person. I'm not a very right and wrong person. I'm absolutely not left wing or right wing. I'm absolutely like, I'm, I change opinions quite often, to be honest. I have a totally constant me, but I'm very uh, reasonable. I am not kidding, yeah? So I don't have many extreme um, opinions. Um, COVID, for example, I don't believe it didn't exist or existed. I just believe that people can tell their stories. And within COVID, it was just like twilight. People had loads of different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe you had to take five um, injections or none. You know, I just believe you could just do whatever you need to do. You know, it's like whatever makes you feel safe and then see what happened now. Right. So, my opinion that provokes me mostly that maybe a lot of people wouldn't agree about, but then I actually think it's a whole gang of people who totally agree, is possibly that if you're an adult, it's difficult to say this because a part of me is just like, can't be like that. But here's it comes. If you're an adult, this is not for kids. 
is that you are truly responsible for your life yourself. Mm. And what I mean by that is, uh, obviously, with help of support, uh, there are systems that you can get support from. Uh, and, and, and I know we all, especially women, are fucking great at being victims because we have been victims. Yeah. Loads of different levels of victimhood, everything from rape to just fiddle, right? Or or bad comments or, or she's cute, you know, like that, right? But I think for women, we really need to feel your victimhood. Shanna du offer, feel that. Go through that and heal that because you're never ever, and um, it's not going to take away that you haven't been a victim, but you are utterly responsible for your life. And um, if you have all these reasons why you can't do things in life, then it's unfortunately your job to <laughs> step in and step up into your life. And it sounds super sharp and harsh. And um, I know exactly how difficult that is because actually it's other parts within you is just like, eh, you know, yeah. utmattad or exhausted or burnt out. I get that. But actually, then just be burnt out and then you're happy. Then you go like, I'm just burnt out. And then you stick with that. But it's like your life, don't aim for things that you don't really want to get to. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. You stole my truth. <laughs> It's so harsh, though, isn't it? But it's yeah. so true. I tell you a little story. Um, when I came to Bali, I blamed everybody for my misery, right? My parents, my my um, the accident I've been through and everything. Everybody, everything in my life that happened was happening to me and it was everybody else's fault. And then I saw this healer and her name was Bobby. I had some candida I needed to get rid of and she was doing that and I was laying there and complaining my way <laughs> and then she just looked at me how old are you like 24 you know you're not old enough to take responsibility for your own life now you need to, to get your finger out of your ass and get get going girl and I got so I was I was like fuck I didn't even know that was a thing it shook it's just that comment just shook me to the core because I didn't even like it didn't occur to me I had to be responsible for my own life and yeah, no. but that just changed everything and I went back to her because I liked she was 60 something she could do whatever to me see what she wanted because you know all the women you just listen to them and when they're wise and have been through things in life and when they say things it's the fucking truth <laughs> and and she taught me so many things but oh my god when I went home that day I was like oh shit fuck damn it what now <laughs> because i know and it's so tough isn't it and the thing yeah. is of course of course we get stuck in that that everything bad happened to us and actually bad things happens too and actually not for a reason sometimes i just want to say that you know and it's not like you brought down board because your subconscious energy like forget about all that shit but the point is Things, bad things happen to you, to all of us, when we were too young to take responsibility for it because yeah. we couldn't. So we were just surviving. And that is stuck within us. And I totally get it. And I say it with kindness. But the point is, it's like, and I'm not saying that you can just get out of it or like, oh. you know, it's like it's through therapy. It's loads of different things you can do. But it's like somewhere along the line, I'm like this, you know, you know, when people go talk about, not going to the gym or going to the gym I'm like I don't give a shit if you go to the gym or not what happens in between I, I, I would love to do this but then you never do that you know and I'm talking about myself now. I'm not talking about anyone else and it's absolutely with responsibility I blame everyone Nikki I blame it. <laughs> it's just like I'm the, my ex-boyfriend he took the most fertile years out of my life you know we're really close friends but I'm totally guilty of it too but the point is it's like it's you are absolutely responsible and and then if you can't take that responsibility then that's okay too but just notice that and be like no i checked in then it's better to be like this i don't want to take any responsibility i'm just going to you know it's at least be honest and hold that for yourself yeah i hear you it's tough <laughs> smack just a little smack <laughs> in the face <laughs> oh, yeah 
anyways i think we are almost at the end of this and i i want to um, just ask one last question what is your best tip to make the world a better place <laughs> oh really easy yeah. easy <sighs> wait until the twilight sets in step into nature Even if it's snow on the ground, take off your shoes. You will. You're not going to die if you step your feet into nature. It's not going to kill you. Sometimes it's wet. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's warm. Sometimes it's dry. But feel that. Feel the ground under your feet. Look at the light. Look how the light is shifting between day and night. When night sets in, you're going to see that again because the light becomes totally clear and it's just darkness. Sit there in the twilight and become aware of that that's also within you. It's just a flighty moment during these 24 hours that we have who's ticking away who then becomes our life. But sit in that and don't listen to what I ever said. Explore and experience what happened to you. That is so something beautiful. like that. Something like that. That was perfect. I, I'm I'm gonna go in to do that, so I can go into the twilight quite early in the in the day here. Then, <laughs> oh, listen, it's amazing. Yeah, it's just check what happened. I'm not I'm not going to say anything, but it's like it's almost like the the end of the day is uh, the night is welcomed with this orchestra of all the birds. You know, it's like all the living kind of. Um, The, all the all the things that has life in the woods comes alive even in the outskirts of a city you know it's like all the birds kind of make noises to settle down in the trees it's it, i love the twilight because it's such a flighty moment you know it's like it's that kind of liminal space it's not day it's not night it's it's something else i mean if there is a other world around the world it's definitely the gateways through the twilight because it's non-distinct and also we Our eyes become so a bit blurry in that blue light. You know, it's we we don't really see thirty uh, something Danish curly hair. It everything gets a bit blurry, and in that blurriness, I tend to see better. You know, when I photograph people, I don't see their tattoos. I just see marks on the body because actually, what the tattoo says is not important. It's the breathing of the person, the space, and the woods that matters to me. And I think for me, always going. You can be, you can, you can be as crazy as you want, but as long as you got your feet placed in the moss or in the soil, you're all right. I It's wonder, like when you get lose hold of that, if something happens. I want you to take a picture of me now. Oh, I would love to. You and Jens, maybe. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh I would love that. <laughs> so let me know so in the end here where can people find you because you are such an incredible woman photographer and i don't I've, and just in general i just love the your ideas and your thoughts about life so where can people find you and maybe do you do some more retreats so i um <clears throat> I am Yannicka Honey, and I obviously have a website who's not shadow banned because it's my website and I pay for it. So it's Yannicka Honey. Or it's, I mean, I do think when the blackbird sings underscore on Instagram, it's quite a nice connection to me in my work because I do update every day and I talk in the stories about this old diet, twilights, female bodies, male bodies, and uh, life in general. And then I always have my Yannicka Honey account as well on Instagram or TikTok, where I'm the Whistle Diet Witch, I think. <laughs> um, but also, if people have any questions, email yannicka at yannickahoney.com. Yeah, I like when people get in touch. I think this is uh, 2023. It's all about communication for yeah. reals, you know? Yeah. Uh, me and Wild Herbarista, Rebecca Tiger, was talking about having a retreat this summer and uh, to be honest we're still looking for a space but that might happen so last year we had the twilight re retreat which was all about the liminal space so it's all about not betting ourselves not changing anything just sitting in really figure out what this is all about which is 
uh, could be something totally different for, for you than for mm. me, but sharing that liminal space, sharing that twilight together. So our retreat back then was two different shoots, one in the evening and one in the morning. After sun gone down, just before sun went up uh, in nature, loads of amazing exercises and sharing and um, really um, trying to steer this ship in a different direction. I think even for women, it's all about betting yourself and transforming and be your bet. What is it called? Be your better self or something, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God, like a part of me really hates myself. I'm like, I'm never going to be good enough, you know? And I think this is again <laughs> detrimental for women. It's like, you don't need to change anything about yourself. You are you. And if something changes or transform, then it will be and it is going to. But you don't need to actively work on changing and bettering yourself all the time because that means that you never like what you are mm. at the present. Oh, that's beautiful. And I think, again, um, do you know what I mean? It's like the whole world is kind of set up like that anyway because it's all about improving. But what about like if, if the improving is just to be, you know? Yeah. So it's a lot about that. And also talking about female gaze, gaze, have our inner eyes often. We're the holders of the of the the guns that the patriarchic society is firing. You know, we got the bullets for these kind of guns that is fired towards female bodies. So how to disarm that on the inside rather than the outside. I mean, if we look at each other like sisters and we make judgments on each other's bodies, we don't even need to get involved. We don't even need to get involved the guys no. or the kind of big businesses. It's, it, the transformation in that sense happens here. So, yeah, more retreats. Yes, more Maybe, yeah, more retreats. Maybe. I hope we can get the place ready for, for summer so we can have some retreats here because we have a beautiful yoga band pointing directly with the view on 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 the forest and and then we want to have some tents we can sleep in but we will see how um uh, sometimes you know you you have a dream and and then you realize the road is a little bit longer than you thought in the first place but we will get there at at least we here it's beautiful we have chickens we have pigs and uh oh we're God. gonna grow a garden this year so uh yeah but i would love to have you here you're always welcome we have a guest room Thank you so much for showing up oh, today. So nice. 